Hello everyone and welcome to Soul GPS where we learn to take our lives back in our hands after narcissistic abuse. This is Ava and today I'm coming to you from a beautiful paradisical location called Porta Venere in Italy and I just really wanted to capture this space for you and bring you a video that hopefully will be really helpful as you are going through the process of extracting yourself from a toxic relationship. So what I wanted to do is give you guys five steps towards excising yourself from whether you're in a marriage or in a relationship and the typical scenario that it follows. Now keep in mind, this is only a model and it is going to be very different from every single person that is going through the process. So here are the five steps. Step number one is awareness. And it is basically the wake-up call. It is the point at which you realize that you have been trapped in a relationship that is extremely toxic or in a home that's extremely toxic or in a friendship or in a job situation, whatever it may be. So step number one is awareness. And this is the place that we tend to also get in touch with perhaps our desire for what it is that we want to have in our life and realize that our desire and the situation in which we're in is completely not in alignment, right? This is also the point where maybe we become aware of what our needs are, you know, or actually the fact that we do not know what our needs are and especially that our needs have never been really addressed in this relationship. It's always been about the other person. So that's also a really big element of the wake up call. <clears throat> Also, this is the place where it is a big opportunity for us to realize what are our weaknesses, right? So the parts of ourselves that have become our vulnerabilities, the parts of ourselves that we never really addressed before, the parts of us ourselves that have been exploited by the toxic person. Hopefully this is not too distracting. I'm kind of in the middle of a tourist trap and people are wondering what in the world is she doing? But I wanna shoot this video for you anyway. It's just so beautiful here. Um, so I wanted to bring the energy of this magical spot to this call, I, I mean to this video. So awareness is step one. Step number two is retreat. And what I mean by that is the, is the time or the step in the process where we want to withdraw from the situation and to have a moment for, us, for ourselves to collect ourselves, to find out what it is that we need in the situation and really reassess and recalibrate. And when I say retreat, I mean two things. It could be a physical retreat. Ideally, that's what it is, where you can physically remove yourself from the situation. It really helps not to be in the presence of the toxic person anymore or if that's not available it is a mental or an emotional retreat basically you're finding a refugee camp for yourself as inner sanctuary you know if it's if, again if it's not available on the outside you need to find a place for yourself inside you know where you are not letting yourself be as affected by what is happening you know so building boundaries building protective walls so Basically, what we need to do here is we need to find a place of safety because if we don't feel safe, it's really difficult to move forward. So that's step number two is retreat. Step number three is plan. This is where after we have had the opportunity to get some distance from the situation, we're starting to make a plan of how, what it is that we need to do in order to prolong this safe, sense of safety, to not have to come back and re-traumatize ourselves, you know, by being in the presence of the toxic person. And this uh, part can actually be exciting, can be scary and exciting. You know, this is the time where usually we tend to have um, a cocktail of emotions that goes through our mind. On one hand, we are getting excited about the prospect of freedom, the prospect of being away, the prospect of having the ability to have a new life, but at the same time where we're still, you know, one foot is still in the past and is still entrenched in this um, really difficult scenario. So um, this is where we really need to draw on our courage, on our inner resolve uh, in order to be able to move forward. And this is a time where I think we need to give ourselves an extra space, extra room to really deliberately plan what it is that we need to do and the more we know about what it is that we need such as in the process of getting a divorce and the process of relocating getting another job right so 
the more we know, the more research we do ahead of time, the more comfortable we're going to feel in the next stage. And st uh, step number four is execution. So this is where all of our planning comes to fruition. I, I equate that to in the story writing to the state, uh, to the moment of a battle. You know, this is where we confront the narcissist. This is where we confront the enemy, the, the, the abuser, the oppressor, and go our own way. We state our plan, we state our boundaries, we execute it, and we actually do it. So, of course, when we're looking at a story or a movie, this actually really follows the master storytelling, um, hero's journey type plan, which is why I wanted to really present it to you this way, to show you that really this is, uh, you are living through your hero's journey while you do this. But, uh, you know, on the movie screen and on, in the movies, we want drama, you know, the, the more, the bigger the explosions, the better. In this case, it's exactly the opposite. You want to do it as quietly, as clandestinely as you possibly can. So, ideally, you know, maybe there, you, you move out when they're away on a, on a business trip, right? Or you just block them and you just do not let them get to you in any other way. Again, if it's just, say, a boyfriend, right? You just, you just completely vanish. It's like poof, cloud of smoke, you're gone. And they don't have a way to get to you because it can, you can get re-traumatized if they start hoovering you. And of course, what tends to happen is they're going to be the sweet words, gonna be the pity ploy, whatever it is that this narcissist is used to playing this game with, they're going to pull out all of their art artillery and you know start to use it against you because again, they know your weak spots and they're going to do everything they can to get you back. So the key is to not fall for this and the best way not to fall for this is to not expose yourself to their manipulations. And so that's that's once you get through step number five four, that is really that's that's really the biggest the biggest hurdle, overcoming the biggest hurdles. And step number five is new equilibrium. And yes, it is the same as something that you would do in a story. Um, usually after the big climax follows the new moment of peace, the new, new is, uh, rules have been established. In this case, it is your rules. It is you looking at what it is that you want for yourself in your new life and following on that. So it's a real big change of energy, real big change of frequency. It can feel really odd you know because you were used to this drama this up and down emotional roller coaster it's no longer there it's peaceful it's quiet it may feel really strange initially it may feel like you know you numb uh, nothing's happening what's going on but the truth is that this is your canvas to paint on you can put it in whatever it is that you want so I'm gonna wrap up here I hope that this video was helpful if so give me a thumbs up subscribe let me know what you thought um, let me know if you have any questions if you need personal coaching I my information is down below you can get a hold of me greetings to you from Italy again big hugs wherever you are I'm sending you all my best and Remember to let your inner compass guide you and I will catch you in another video. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.